Hello, everyone. My name is Usman Sindhu. I am with the ITOM product marketing team, and I'm joined with Richard Haas from the DevOps product marketing team. Hi, Richard. Hi, Usman. Great to be here. Yeah. And today, both of us will talk about the state of DevOps and SRE industry as seen from the latest EMA research that was sponsored by ServiceNow. So we're going to walk you through some of the key salient findings and uh, the report is there. Both of those reports for your download, we'll put the links in the description and you can read it, share it with your colleagues and friends. All right, let's dive in. So uh, Richard, why don't I um, uh, leave it up to you, kick it off with some of the findings from the DevOps report. Yeah, I thought this was a great chart to start on because it really sets the context from my point of view on why our customers are so keen on DevOps and so many companies are moving to DevOps so rapidly because they're really looking for what this chart says, right? The speed of software delivery, they're looking to speed up what they do in terms of updating their apps. Um, the other one particularly that jumps out to me is business agility because they're trying to uh, be more agile and be more responsive to, uh, to the business. Uh, particularly when you think about what we've been through with the pandemic and uh, trying to adapt very quickly as the business needs have adapted. And at the same time, you know, somewhere something of interest to you, of course, is they're, they're trying to retain this application reliability through the whole point, uh, you know, the whole, whole process, so, which I'm sure you see a lot of too, right? Yeah, and absolutely. Uh, you mentioned pandemic and a post-pandemic, of course, um, you know, the whole drive to come back to um, the offices, uh, there's a more reliance on speed and velocity, right, of the, the product delivery. So I think this is spot on. Um, and the, um, the kind of the application reliability is foremost for ops teams and SRE teams because they need to still find their bottlenecks and they need to be yeah. responsive to address those bottlenecks with um, agreed upon SLOs or error budgets and whatnot. Um, so this is spot on. And sort of that lends itself into this whole dynamic of teams, right? Um, you know, we are seeing this among our customers and this report uh, rightfully points out this whole decentralization uh, movement where uh, if you look at the top, 35% uh, of the companies are in the process of becoming um, fully decentralized with multiple DevOps and SRE teams. Uh, but also the nuance there is there's still a you know, huge pack, right? Which are still uh, maintaining their core IT ops and IPSM uh, counterparts as a central, uh, while the teams on the DevOps side are uh, decentralizing. And, and that's an interesting concept because uh, this lends its way into the, the whole technology-based um, kind of the organization where teams are becoming together, both IT side from the DevOps and SRE side to deliver the business outcomes. That is very interesting. Yeah, and what we're seeing is this kind of hybrid environment, right, where companies are making this transition, but some of their teams perhaps are, are sort of fully DevOps based or a product perhaps based around a product, whereas others are still relying on centralized IT operations. And the challenge of managing that as you're going through that transition, or even if you're not going to completely transition, you're going to still have certain services that are centralized in an IT team versus being distributed into DevOps or product teams. Uh, it's, a, it's a real management challenge, right? particularly as, as you mentioned, technologies, all the new technologies that uh, teams are adopting as they go down this path. Yeah. Yeah, the recent work we have done with Wayfair or Wiley, I mean, those are uh, kind of becoming a digital native companies and right. their revenues have been increasingly coming from um, digital, digital channels. So uh, for them, the both of these concepts work uh, very well because they need to have those uh, um, dev teams pushing code out features very very uh, fast um, you know many times a day uh, or many times a week um, and then ops and sre is there as a custodian of reliability and ability for them to um, find problems as they occur and you uh, said every company spot. is becoming a software company right so absolutely absolutely yeah. right all right so um so that's interesting, right? And so let's move to a little bit of challenges, right? Some of the top challenges that DevOps uh, are facing and how SREs are actually uh, able to help them. So why don't you sort of uh, pick a couple of them and say, what are, from a DevOps perspective, what yeah. are the things top of mind? Yeah, sure. Well, let's start from the top, right? I mean, what we're really seeing and the whole goal of DevOps is to move a lot of the traditional operational activity 
left, shift it left, as it were, into the development team and have the development team or the product team, the actual uh, DevOps team, be responsible for building their dev and test environments. Obviously, there's still some kind of oversight of that and, and increasing that. That's becoming site reliability engineering based um, or traditionally more uh, you know, an IT operations team. But that's a key aspect, right? And then part of uh, the whole move to DevOps and the challenge of moving to DevOps is uh, how do you manage all of that change in those environments? Infrastructure is becoming managed through code. So uh, we have all of this change happening as code in addition to all the development activities that are going on. Um, and then the, the second one on the list also is about getting the staff interested in defining and configuring the strategy. And I would add to that things like policy. How do they manage and define policy uh, for those changes, for what's going to be happening as you're deploying code, as you're going through tests, you know, starting to automate tests. Not everybody is really advanced in terms of how they're automating tests up to this point. And then the other stages through that, like security scanning and other activities that have to happen before something gets into production. It's, it's quite a move quite a set of changes for teams to get get used to. And, uh, and of course, everything has to work well and operate while you're making that transition. So uh, a lot of, uh, lot of effort for these teams as they, as they do that transformation. Yeah, and from the ops and SRE point of view, right, there are a couple of things, because right. the one, if you look at the traditional ops model, um, in the in big, large enterprises that have these distributed teams, um, IT might still be responsible for provisioning um, or providing those environments, right? For example, providing those instances that are running on uh, multi-cloud environments and um, is practically providing those guardrails and policies. Uh, but dev team still has to uh, spin up an instance to uh, test the code and you know, decommission that environment it's happening on a daily basis. So, uh, so I think ops and uh, kind of the SRE model is to the ability for them to give those um, environments to them um, in a very, very seamless fashion. Um, and then on the tools side, right, that's important because um, dev guys don't want to leave their tools. So exactly. for ability, right, so for them to be comfortable in doing their work um, in a you know, more efficient fashion while everything else gets taken care of. For example, uh, the concepts like providing uh, distributed teams to bring their services on in a very seamless fashion and ability to uh, track observability, trace the problems, um, so SRE and options can enable them and help them out um, so that they don't know bottlenecks um, in their future deliveries. Yeah, and, and so, yeah. you still need from the upside, I'm guessing, I mean, you still need everything that we've done traditionally, maybe through the CMDB or a service graph, right? Even though this is a very transitory environment now we're moving into with the cloud and container, right? containerization, things like that, you still might need that, that connectivity that a service graph brings, right? Yeah, it's a central visibility challenge, right? Really, because um, mm. uh, you know, in a traditional environments, you still need to to know, you know, what are what is going on if there are any problems in these distributed environments. So as companies move from monolithic uh, architectures to distributed architectures, um, there's a greater need for that visibility, of course. Right. Um, like a couple of customers, you know, I talked to, you know, they ran a very traditional environment as an IT perspective and then they find out their dev teams are spinning up thousands of containers um, they yeah. have no idea about and now from a, a central visibility perspective they need to manage those they need to know uh, because if anything goes down it all comes back to them to solve That's it so exactly right, right. right. great so um, yeah so let's let's move on and let's bring in some AI and ML to this picture and this this data point was really interesting to me because um, you know for for the uh, operations and dev effectiveness, um, AI plays and automation plays a great role. And AI ops has become that kind of a moniker to, on the operation side, um, to find issues early on, to be predictive, and then start solving them. Um, and one sort of the data I, I see here is, uh, there's a little bit of uh, uh, different ways of how the team see the value from AI ops. So first off, if you see the DevOps team, see the value and decrease the number of incidents as they want to use AI ops versus the SRE teams want to point out events as they detected very early on in the uh, service user desk complaint or as the events are streaming. Um, and, you know, let's talk about it a little bit because I, I think why DevOps want to 
see the decrease in number of incidents because they don't want to be caring about those incidents. They want to focus right. on their tooling. They want to focus on their product delivery. Um, incidents uh, management or incident tracking will slow them down. This is not part of their job. So they want some automated way for them to take care of incidents so they don't have to do anything about that. But on the SRE side, for them to run services reliably, to uh, to have those SLOs being met and error budgets being met, they need to identify problems very early on so they don't yeah. become bottlenecks down, uh, you know, uh, upstream the service. Um, so I think that's kind of the nearest why you know there's a difference in expectation from AI ops. Do you have any observation? Yeah, I do. well, I see the same thing and, and the same logic behind it, right? The developers, as you said, they're much more focused on, I want to build code, I want to innovate and do new things in the code. I don't want to be spending a lot of time on incidents. So that's very important to me to, to, you know, what is the number of incidents? How do we get that number down? Not so much where in the process necessarily the, uh, the resolution is going to occur. Um, I think that will change actually over time as developers, you know, with the, the idea of DevOps is that you become the owner of your, your code completely, right? All the way into production. You wrote it, you own it kind of thing. And I think so then there will be much more balance in terms of where incidents are picked up, the value that's actually being delivered to their end customer. They're going to have that more direct connection to the end customer. So I do see that becoming more important to DevOps teams going forward. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's interesting to see how this, this breaks down. I think the other thing that we're seeing here is as a from a management organization, right? Or, or as the, the, the people that have to own this whole process, how are they focused on identifying these incidents sooner, eliminating them before they get into production or, or cause an issue? And, you know, you mentioned things like SREs being focused on error budgets, for example. You know, one of the things we want to try and do in the whole change automation process is bring that mindset into automating the change. So, you know, if you can model an error budget in some way in service now, then we can use that as part of the policy for change automation. So, for example, saying if there's a currently open incident, then we should uh, be more keen to get uh, defect repairs, you know, fixes out into production rather than new code for a particular uh, service that might have incidents open right now. Um, so those kinds of things, I think, uh, will also help. Uh, this whole process and, and people understand, you know, the, the impact of these incidents on their day-to-day -day work. Yeah, and in fact, you brought in some great points and it sort of uh, kind of goes into the AI powered service ops story as well, mm -hmm. where we are seeing this whole movement um, away from instant-based culture to most event or alert-based culture. And then this story, this data point uh, points to that story exactly because you know this is how organizations become more predictive and proactive um so that's right on all right great so well finally we are towards the end of this uh and by the way this is not all of it for our listeners we have a lot of different observations these are just some salient features of those um and finally this was interesting to me because in a, in a traditional it world we always say and see from customers that you know 80 percent more um, outages are just based on changes, unplanned changes. And um, things are not as different when you go into the distributed environments. And this is an example from the Kubernetes where um, the data is showing us that configuration changes amount to be the largest you know, chunk of these uh, causes of outages. Um, and that's amazing, right? I mean, you think about it that um, still that small piece of change that you made in one of the pods or one of the, the, the images can cause the whole service um, to go, you know, uh, to go bunkers, right? So uh, that, that is amazing. What do, you, what do you think about that, Richard? Well, it's, it's, I think it's the next big thing, actually, in terms of DevOps and DevOps challenges, because, I mean, this, and we just saw an example recently, like a week or two ago, Fastly, uh, you know, a, a, a cloud service provider went down, bringing down CNN and uh, Spotify and places like that. Yeah. And apparently that was due to a configuration change, right? So uh, it just shows how, uh, how important this is and how important it's becoming. I, and I, I don't know historically how these figures change, but I would suspect that product bugs has reduced over time and the importance of config change has grown. 
product bugs because we're doing more automated testing now and things like that. And DevSecOps is becoming a big deal and the security pieces, security scanning is getting a lot better before code gets in, into production. So yeah, I think it all comes down to config changes. This is exactly why ServiceNow acquired Swigel last year and it will become a, a standalone product on the platform later this year. Uh, the ability to actually intercept a, code, a config change before it happens, apply some policy to it, uh, do things, simple things like, have we corrected the database string before this, uh, you know, that we're connecting to before it goes from test into production? Those kind of things are uh, just uh, very common configuration errors that get out into production. So yeah, the ability to do that. I mean, I'm, I'm not sure if we should coin the term dev config ops, um, but I'm beginning <laughs> to think like, you know, there's a whole new section within the pipeline that needs to be addressed and it's configuration change. So. Uh, that's I love that's that. exactly why I think this is critical going forward. <laughs> yeah, and and again, that brings uh, that you talk about Swigel and and same thing with the um, you know the our latest acquisition, Lightstep, right? Uh, right? The whole observability angle, the whole change intelligence yeah. angle is huge because um, th those are built for the environments like these, which yeah. are distributed, which are um, you know pretty uh, scary, right? For for traditional operation of the SRE folks because they have no control. So right. ability to trace these problems um, across the stack um, is is fundamentally important. Um, and that is huge. Yeah, and across multiple stacks, right? The, the big challenge multiple with the uh, yeah. cloud and DevOps space is that different teams have different stacks, right? And uh, yeah, absolutely. the ability to really bring that all together in one place and apply that consistent policy is right. Yeah, very good. Wonderful. Um, so uh, thanks, Richard, uh, for thanks, Richard. being my partner on this one. And thank you all. Bye for now. Thanks.